Hey everybody. So if you've been watching the last three or four videos I've made, they've been about you know how lipos react to uh, you know having a bad cell. I did one about the C rating and the internal resistance. I even did one on how to dispose of it with all kinds of different ways, including salt water, which I proved scientifically, if you do it right, you can discharge a battery salt water. But I know all the haters come out and say, oh, there's videos that say it's impossible. I use science. I videotaped the whole process. So I'm done with that. So what we're going to talk about is parallel charging. So over here, you're going to see a plane called the MSL-1. It's a plane I built, oh, about 14 years ago, but it sat for two or three years because the gas engine shook it too much. So I put an electric in it about 11 years ago. I put a 100 kV motor with a 3214 prop, uh, I'm sorry, a 3014 prop, and uh, pulls about 6600 watts, but it takes four batteries, and I was flying at 10S. And um, I got the iCharger, uh, which you'll see a picture around here some, it's just sitting here. It's the 3010B, as in boy, or Bravo. And... Um, so I want to go through how I've had so much success doing parallel charging. And I know I've read a couple of forms and everybody where they say it's the absolute most dangerous thing you can do is parallel charge. And I'm not going to debate that because if you don't know what you're doing, it could be quite dangerous. But to me, it's just as dangerous as uh, charging batteries that might have a bad cell and you walking away and not knowing it and burning down your garage. Okay. And I just did a video on... Uh, how to identify that through your internal resistance so that you're not charging a battery that has a bad cell. There's a little uh, disclaimer here. If you balance charge with a good balance charger 99% of the time, the balance charger is going to save your ass. So let's jump into why I have done this for 11 years and why I've had no problems. First of all, you must balance charge when you do parallel charging. You have to have... Um, my setup will actually do six parallel charges at once. I've never done six at once. I've done four and I just did it now and I wrote down a bunch of data and I'm going to share it with you. So you must use a balanced charger. <clears throat> a good LiPo charger with balancing will not allow cells to overcharge. So basically what's happening is <clears throat> if you have a battery that reaches 4.2 uh, volts in a cell, um, the charger will start turning everything down so it doesn't exceed that. The worst that can happen is all your other cells never reach 4.2. If you do a parallel charge without a charger, I'm sorry, without balancing, if you do a parallel charge without the balance mode turned on and your balance taps plugged in, it's going to look at putting the voltage in there. So if you do have a bad cell or cells are out of balance, it's going to keep pumping that amperage in there until it possibly sets a battery on fire. Okay, you should always check your internal resistance first on your cells before you ever do parallel charging. Now keep in mind, I probably have a thousand parallel charges because that airplane over there has a thousand flights on it and I always parallel charge the four uh, batteries, okay? Batteries should never be left attended. You know, come on. I mean, if you're going to charge LiPos, don't put them on a charger and walk away and cook dinner or go out to McDonald's. Um, charge at 1C per pack. And what I mean by that is my charger right now, these are 6,000 milliamp packs. So I charge them, 1C is 6 amps. I set my charger at 24 amps. That way each cell is seeing one fourth of the 24, which is 6 amps. Okay? Don't ever go above that. My charger will only go to 30 amps, so I couldn't do that. Well, I could do it a little bit, but you know. Um, battery packs must be very close to voltage. These little battery medics that, I, uh, medics that I talk about from Hobby King, I will plug it into each of these and make sure they're all very close. And I'm going to read you what my settings were, I mean, what my voltages were before I started. Um, cells should be very close. And what I mean by cells, when you plug this in, if you see like 3.85, 3.85, 3.82, and 3.85, you're probably okay. If you see 3.85, um, one at 3.95, you got one cell that's a lot more charged than the other cell and you need to balance them. With this little doohickey, I press this button and it evens them all out even before I put it on my balanced charger. Notice the word balanced is used here a lot. Um, you must have packs and cells very close in voltage. And what I mean by that is not, you, you don't want to have a five and a four cell ever together. That won't work. You don't want to have a 6,000 milliamp and a 4,000 milliamp. That won't ever work. 
What I mean by saying you must have packs and cells that are very close in voltage is if this pack has cells at 3.85, 3.86, 3.84, this one has them at 3.85, 3.84, 3.5, 3.84, you know, as long 3.85 and 3.84, talking too quick. If these are all that close, I have never had a problem out of the thousand charges. So I'm gonna read you some numbers here. So I checked my internal resistance. Pack one had all fours. Cell one, two, three, and four had a four. If you don't remember from my other video, your internal resistance, if it's one to 10, you're pretty good. Or actually if you're one, two, three, four, five, you're awesome. If you're up to nine or 10, it's still a good battery. If you're 11 to 15, that battery's starting to get a little bit of age on it. If you're 16 to 20, it's almost time for retirement and over 20, if you got a glider or a park flyer, you want to put that battery in fine, but you're never going to get a lot of current out of it. So, uh, cell, uh, battery one was all fours, battery two was four, four, three, four, battery five, three was all fives, and battery four was all threes. So my internal resistance are all great in there. They're all pretty close, okay? If I had an internal resistance in here of like 14, another one of three, I don't know if I'd do that because I don't know what's going to really go on. And I'll test that one day. But right now, I don't know what's going to go on with how that battery is, is sucking in the uh, power versus the lower versus high, high versus low internal resistance. So my started voltages were 3.85. All four cells on, on pack one was 3.85. All four cells on pack two were 3.89. Uh, on cell, on battery three, I'm sorry, this is battery one, two, and three, not cells. On battery three, I was 3.81, 3.81, 3.81, and 3.82. And then on pack four, I was all 3.85s. So I had plugged this doohickey in and balanced them all really, really close. So after 20 minutes, I stopped the charger and checked my voltages just to know. I normally don't do that, but I'm doing it for the video. So on battery one, I was at 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.09. That's pretty close. Actually, that's really close. Um, pack two was 4.10, 4.09, 4.08, and 4.10. That's still good. I mean, we're talking about just one little number there, guys. Um, cell three, I mean, pack three was 4.11, 4.10, 4.09, 4.10. And then pack four was 4.11, 4.08, 4.10. 08 and 4.09. So those were all really, really close. That was at 20 minutes. At 35 minutes, everything, um, well, pack one was all 4.17, pack two was all 4.17, pack three was 4.18, 4.17, 4.17, 4.18, and then pack four was 4.17, and then the rest were 4.8s. And then at 43 minutes, where it was completely charged, um, um, I did look, all four packs took 11,000 milliamps, which came out to like 2,750 milliamps per pack. I was stored at 3.85, so that makes about sense. All, uh, pack one was 4.2, 4.2, 4.19, 4.19. I'm sorry, that was pack one. Pack two was 4.19, and then the rest were 4.20s. Pack three was 4.20, 4.19, 4.19, 4.20. And pack four was all 4.19s except for one 4.20. So it totally charged all four of them, literally perfect. Um, the reason I have such success, I'm telling you, is I have all my packs almost equally balanced before I charge them, and they all have internal resistance really close. Now, this sounds complicated, okay? If you're a novice, um, you may not need any, you may not ever have an airplane. Um, like this one over here, this is my MSL2. This takes four lipos for the flight pack, two lipos for the um, uh, receiver system, the radio system, and then I have one lipo in there for a my exhaust flickers at the RPM of the motor to look like it's a real exhaust system. So I actually have seven lipos in this airplane here. Um, so I parallel charge because I've got that kind of an airplane. If you've got an airplane that takes one battery, you don't need a parallel charge. Just do your normal balanced charging. And I know, look, I know in my other video I said some people balance charge and some people don't. And then people start coming out saying, you must balance charge every time. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to let you decide how you fly your 
RC airplane and you figure out what's safest for you. I know there's FPV people that will not balance charge for four or five charges and then they'll throw a balance charge on there to make sure the battery's leveled back out because they just don't want to spend. I mean, for me, when I balance charge, it always would take, I did this in testing, it would take about 30% longer to balance charge than just doing a straight charge. Um, and I already talked about my other video, what's the dangers of not balanced charging. There are a lot of dangers if you don't balance charge, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you um, that it is mandatory because guess what? This radio has modes that you can do it without balanced charging. If balanced charging was really mandatory, manufacturers wouldn't be making it with a non-balanced mode. Okay? So, that's it for this video, everybody. I just wanted to talk about my parallel charging because I mentioned it in another video and I got two or three people sending me emails saying, basically, I'm an ass wipe for doing it because it's the most dangerous thing you can do. But how have I had 11 years with a thousand of these parallel charges and never had an issue? Um, maybe it's because it works if you know what you're doing and you take your time. Okay? If you're a novice and you're only flying an airplane with one battery, you don't even need to worry about this. But if you're flying big, uh, multi-engine, uh, uh, multi-motor, because I had somebody say, you know, electric motor is not an engine. But then my UK friends came out and said, well, no, we call everything an engine. Um, sorry to digress. But here's the thing to think about. Um, you need to find out what works for you in the safest manner. Okay. I always balance charge because I know it's going to make my batteries last literally forever. These packs are over four years old. They've got, these only have about 125 flights on them though. Um, most of my batteries get 300 to 400 flights before the internal resistance goes above 15. And I think it's because of how much care I put into them. So I'm just trying to share my data with you all, okay? I know a lot of novices watch this and they reach out to me and thank me. I know you experts out there call me a poser and say I'm full of crap. That's fine. I, I got a thick skin. You know, I know the earth isn't flat. So rock on, everybody. I hope you find this beneficial. If you love it and really like it, let me know by liking or subscribing. Send me emails if you got questions um, or uh, reach out to me through YouTube. And you have an awesome, awesome day. Thanks, everybody. Be safe.